we're going to go over the four steps to creating our product mockup file. Step one, we're going to remove the color from this pink shirt. Step two, we're going to create a displacement map. Step three, we're going to create and define your shape and smart object layer. And step four, we're going to apply our pattern design, hide edges, and save out our file. There are two ways to remove the color from your shirt if you don't have a white object. It's best to start out with a white object that you plan to mock up, but I raided my daughter's clothing drawers and she didn't have a white tank top. So we're starting out with a pink, top, pink tank top. And as long as it's light in color, you can do this with it. And so I thought this would be a great way to show you how to remove the color from an object if you can't find something that's white. Later on in this video, I'm gonna show you how if you wanna keep the background color the same color, so you have a wood background that you're using or props in your image, you would only wanna desaturate just the, just the shirt. And I'll show you that later. But in case you wanna desaturate the entire image, you're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and select Hue Saturation, and you're gonna desaturate the image. Most of the way or all the way, however you want, however seems good for you. I'm gonna select OK, and our image is completely desaturated and ready to go. This is step two is where we're going to create the displacement map for applying it to our final mock-up. If you already desaturated the entire image in step, you can use that image and just add the blur, which we're gonna do later. This is how you would create your displacement map using channels. So we're going to go into window and open our channels dialog box. And you can see the different channels that are here. You've got RGB, you've got just the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And what we're looking for is one of the RGB channels that have the highest level of contrast. This, the red channel doesn't look like it has that much contrast. The green has a little bit of contrast, but the blue channel seems to have the most contrast. So we're gonna use this channel. So we're going to right click on the blue channel and select duplicate channel. And I wanna create a new document, so I'm gonna select new. And we're gonna name this, um, gonna name this new file, tank top displacement. And if you downloaded, in my blog post, if you've downloaded the tutorial tools, then you'll see that this tank top dis displacement file is already in, in that for you. So, but if you wanna go ahead and learn how to create this yourself, then this is, these are the steps that you would do. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then we're going to add a blur to it and we're gonna select filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna make the radius 2.5 pixels. You can see it adds a little bit of softness to our image here. And we're gonna select okay. And then you're gonna go file, save, and you will save it as a Photoshop file. So you can select save. I already have one uh, saved out. You can see it in the files, it's under displacement map. And I already have that saved, so I'm not gonna go ahead and save it, so. In step three, we're going to create and define your shape and smart object layer. To define our shape, I use the pen tool. I feel it gives the most flexibility in conforming to the shape of fabrics. We zoom in with our zoom tool and get really, really close. And you're gonna select the pen tool and starting on the top left corner, you're going to start clicking and dragging your anchor points. And you can hold down the space bar 
to move along the edge of your shirt and it doesn't have to be perfect you can go back in uh, with the direct selection tool and adjust your anchor points when you're all finished so you're just going to go around the entire edge of the shirt going all the way around the top and then you'll close the path here when you're finished i already have the path created i'm going to just delete that path here and you can see i already created this path and if you define the path and you want to go in and adjust your anchor points you select the direct selection tool in the menu and then you can go in and actually click on all the anchor points and the handles and adjust them so i'm just going to go back in my history panel and change that but the path is already there in in our paths panel I mentioned earlier in this video that I would show you how to desaturate just the shirt in case you have a background or other items in your photo that you don't want to get rid of the color for. And I'm going to show you my layers panel. I already did that here. So I'm going to turn this one off. This is the pink shirt image. And then this is what it will look like once we're done. So you can see how it will look just desaturating the image. So I'm gonna go back to our pink shirt image. And how we do this is exactly how we did it in step one, is we're gonna to go to image, adjustments, and select hue saturation. And you're just going to desaturate the shirt. And that looks pretty good. And you can see that it only desaturated the shirt because we have the shirt selected by defining it with, within our paths panel. And so it's only just desaturating the area that is selected. And I'm gonna select okay. And you'll notice though, I'm gonna just deselect it here. You will notice that you have a little bit of pink from the shirt um, contaminating part of the image and this is why it's great to start with a white object now you can always um, you know desaturate the entire image and you wouldn't have to worry about it but it's really not going to be a big deal once you get to creating the mock-up and the final image also later on in this blog post series I'm going to show you how to actually you know separate the shirt and really the background is not going to be anything to worry about. So that's how you desaturate just the shirt. So let's get into creating the smart object layer. We're starting off working with the desaturated white shirt that we have now. Now we're going to fill this shirt layer with color to help us check our work and also when we have the smart object layer really be able to see where our ob our design will be placed. I already created this on its own layer here in my layers panel so you can see this is what we're going to be doing right now and I'm just going to turn this off and show you how we get there. So within our paths panel, we're going to select the icon again and hit control or command and select our layer. And we're going to fill this selection on a new layer. We're gonna go, go to new layer and you're gonna name it tank shirt or whatever you wanna name it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just name it something like tank shirt tutorial for the new layer so that you can see. And I'm gonna fill it with this foreground color that I have here. This color is number 9CD1D3. And just go in here and you can see the number right there. But you can fill it with any color that you want. 
So I'm going to go to edit, fill, and select foreground color. And you can see that you can't really see the shirt right now because we haven't changed the, the mode here. So I'm gonna go into my layers panel and change it from normal to multiply. And now we can start to see our, see our shirt through the color fill. And here's where you really wanna check your work and make sure that if your anchor points are really conforming to the edges of the shirt. If it's not, then you need to go back in and select your paths and use the direct, direct selection tool and edit your anchor points. So if you can really see some of your shirt, then go, in, go back in and make those edits now. So now that we have it selected and filled, we're going to create, convert this to uh, our smart, smart object. So we're going to the layers menu and select, where is it? Convert to smart object. And you will see the smart object thumbnail right there. Here we are in step four, where we're going to apply our artwork or pattern design, hide our edges, and then save out our mock-up file. So you already created your smart object layer, and so we're going to apply a pattern design to this shirt now. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my smart object thumbnail, and this will open up our PSB file. And you can see the shape of our shirt here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our artwork. I'm gonna to go to place embedded. You can do place linked if you want, um, or copy and paste and put the image in if you wanna deal with link files, or you can just go the place embedded route um, this is a pattern that I've included in the download that you can use to try out or use your own artwork. So I'm going to select place and you can see it scaled it to the width of our file here. And because my artwork is larger than my image, it's perfectly okay to go ahead and scale it. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and using the top left corner, I'm going to scale my image, of my pattern to the size here. And just double click and there it is. So if you reorder the layers, you can see the shape of your shirt. This is where the pattern fill will be. And I'm going to drag this back down and hide this because we, we don't want this to be part of what we see. So now I'm just gonna hit X, close it out. And I wanna save changes to this PSV file so that we can see it applied to our shirt. So I'm gonna hit yes. And now you can see that our pattern fill is now over our shirt, but it's not conformed to the shape of our shirt. And there's an easy way to fix that. And this is my favorite part, guys. So what we're gonna do is gonna go back into our paths panel and we're going to select the path thumbnail and hit control or command again and it's going to select the shape of our shirt. And now we're going to go into our layers panel and select the mask and just click that and there's our shirt. It is completely masked and is starting to look like a really good mock-up here. So next we're going to add the displacement map that we created earlier, um, or you can use the displacement map that's included in the download. 
So we're going to go with our layer selected here, we're going to go to filter, distort, displace, and just keep everything the same here and hit OK. And we're going to select our tank top displacement and hit open. And you can see that it moved our um, pattern to up into the left a little bit. I'm just going to turn on and off the filter so that you can see the difference. This is without it. This is with it. And you can see it really starts to conform to the shape of the shirt here into the folds. And the more contrasty that your image is, um, the more you will see uh, the displacement map really conform to it. And I want to mention that there's some couple edits that we need to do to our PSB file now that we applied the displacement map. And let me get into that in the next section. Now that we've applied the displacement map, I want to show you, I'm going to zoom in here to the bottom of the shirt, especially this bottom right corner. This is not necessarily a big deal, but um, I'm always wanting to make sure everything looks great. And you will notice that because we applied the displacement map and we conformed everything to you know the size of our sh our selection, when you apply the displacement map, it will because it moves it to the up and to the left, your you will get a little bit of errors here. So you can see here, and if we go down here to the bottom of the shirt, you can see the edge, edge is not exactly conforming to where we want it to. There's a really easy fix to this, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna zoom out. And what we're gonna do is we're going to double click and get into our PSB file. And what we're gonna do is we are going to change the width of our canvas. And we're going to go to image and canvas size. And we're gonna change it from the 7.906. We're going to change it to nine inches. And we're going to change the height here to 11 inches. And this should be enough to cover the displacement shifting. I'm going to select OK and exit out and hit yes to save our changes. And there's our fix. If you zoom in, you can see that that fixed the bottom and the corner here of our mockup. So I'm going to zoom out. And you can see that it looks like our shirt mock-up. There is some bonus um, tutorials on my blog um, to show you how you can create, um, define this section here and create uh, another uh, mock-up for the inside. And let me just, I'll go into my um, mock-up here and open it with the tank top. I think it's this one. You can see it. Yeah, here we go. So you can see I did this one and I defined the shape of the back label area. And you pretty much do the same steps that you do that we did in, throughout this tutorial to create and define that. Um, but there's a few other uh, tweaks to, to it. And it's on my blog. If you want to click the link in the video to my blog, it's uh, denisean.com slash blog. And you can see the steps that are shown there in the bonus section um, of that blog, of this blog post. And this is my 
product mockups, um, blog post, um, post three. Thank you for following along and uh, I look forward to seeing your mockups.